Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to show you how you can use the sequence function in Excel to create an easily printable calendar if you wanted to pra practice the uh, don't break the chain technique for productivity. That's a lot. Now, we were doing this the other day in class, and it's a pretty cool feature in Excel using a sequence function to quickly build a calendar. Now, the reason we're doing this is because there's also a productivity technique called Don't Break the Chain. Now, it was made famous by Jerry Seinfeld because he had a habit that he wanted to develop where he's writing a joke every day. So he had a calendar, good old school calendar, and he just put an X on every day that he wrote a joke. And the motivation behind this is is as time passes, you start to see that every day you are doing that habit that you want to build up. And then you'll get to a point to where, boy, you don't want to go a day without not putting an X or without putting an X on there. So you don't want to break the chain of X's that you're doing. Now, of course, he did not invent this method of crossing off things on a calendar, but kind of made it famous. And a lot of people have written about it and done videos about it and about Jerry Seinfeld's technique. But I like Excel. So I wanted to use Excel to create a calendar to keep track of some goals that I had that I wanted to do every day. So let's go ahead and jump over to Excel. I'm going to start up Excel. And I'll just go to a blank workbook. No big deal. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit on here. And just to kind of keep things a little bit organized, I'm going to put over here just in cell A1, it really doesn't matter where, I'm going to put in my starting date. In fact, I take that back. I'll just go ahead and write start date there and then press tab and then on B1, I'll put the date that I actually want to start my habit. And this means it'll be easy for us to change out that date and repopulate our calendar so that it has the, the days that we want. Um, now. I like to start calendar weeks on a Monday. Some people prefer Sunday, which is probably a little bit more common. I actually started my calendar because I did this little activity with class. I started it last Monday on the 27th. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in a date like 2-27-23, February 27th, 23. That was just a few days ago. And I'm going to just resize those a little bit bigger. And I'm going to have my calendar produce over here in Excel in this region. Really easy to do. So once we have this starting date information, I just go to a cell. I'm going to pick on cell D1 here. And I'm going to write in equals sequence. And as soon as I see that function start to build up, I'm going to press my tab key. And I see that there's a few parameters that I need. How many rows do I want? Well, we could do, let's say, each week as a call, uh, we get a you know, our, our week. So each row would be a new week. Let's say I want to do this for eight weeks. So that'll be eight rows, comma. Well, how many columns? This will be easy if we're doing a calendar. We can say, I want seven columns, seven days per week. And then comma. Now, what is my starting date going to be? Well, my starting date, I could actually write a date in here uh, using a date function or something similar, but I can just click on the cell that contains my start date right over there, and that's all I need. So now I'm going to close the parentheses, press enter, and Excel is going to use the spillover feature in order to populate this calendar. Now, you know, you're thinking, oh, hey, that doesn't look right at all. Well, it's just a formatting issue. These numbers are the true numbers that represent dates. So if I select these cells and I just change them out to a short date format, we'll see there are a bunch of dates. Now, I'm going to take a quick second to format this a little bit. First, I will zoom out so I can kind of see everything a little bit better. And you know what, I think I'm going to take this whole thing and just move it down a few rows so that way it's kind of by itself. I'm going to make all of my columns a little bit wider and I'm going to make the rows for this, I'm going to make those noticeably taller so it has more of a calendary look. I'm going to take a moment to go ahead and select these cells and I will apply borders to them. I'll go ahead and put in all borders and I want the dates to show up up at the top or that's centered, but also at the top of the cell. So I'm just changing the alignment of the text. And I don't want my dates to show up that way. So my cells are all still selected. I'm going to head over to, I'm on the home ribbon. I'm going to go to the number formatting command group here. And I'm going to go to custom. And then I'm going to type in what I want. And what do I want? I already did it earlier. So let's see, I want month, day, and then I want the day of the week in there too. So I'm going to start typing out a letter M and I can see up in the sample what it's going to do for me. That's going to give me a two. 
And if I type a second M, that gives me a leading decimal, leading zero. I'm going to type M a third time, and that actually gives me the three letter month. That's what I want. I'm going to do a space, and then I'm going to type in D for day. I'm going to type in D again, and that would give me the date leading zero, space, parentheses. I'm going to type D, D, D a third time, and that actually gives me a three letter day of the week prefix. If I typed D a fourth time, it would spell out the day of the week completely. But I just want the three D's, and I'm going to close those parentheses. Now when I click OK, all of my dates are formatted in this new look. And that is pretty much all there is to it. Now, of course, I could easily change out this calendar. I could change it to March 6, 23, and everything would start on March, th March 6, which is a couple days from now. Um, really easy just to swap that out. I'm going to put this back to 2-27-23, and everything goes back the way it was. Now, this is a pretty old school method. Not that you couldn't record data in here, I suppose, but the idea is that we print this out and then you just literally cross little lines on it. So for instance, I've got my calendar here. I got an insanely big one because I've got a goal over the next few months. I want to increase my chess rating. So I've set up a plan where I'm going to play a chess game and study the game every day and I'm just going to make a note on my calendar what my rating is. So I'm not doing X's per se, but I'm writing in a number each day of the week um, that kind of shows that I accomplished that task. And I want to do this every day for several months and hopefully I'll reach my goal of improving my particular chess score. So. If I'm ready to print something like this, I only want to print the calendar portion. So what I would do here is I would go ahead and select the part of the spreadsheet that contains my calendar. I'm not selecting my start date information up there. And then once I've got my calendar selected, I'll just head over to the page layout ribbon. Yeah, page layout ribbon. And I'm going to go to print area and I'm going to set the print area. So I've set my print area to that particular calendar. Now, if I wanted to, this is what I would print out. Now, I actually don't even own a printer at home, but I can go to file and print. And I typically just print the PDF. And I can see that only my calendar is going to show up on a sheet of paper. And I kind of like that. But I often will go to the scaling option over here in the print settings. And I do like it to uh, actually let me do. I think everything is pretty good. Fit sheet on one page that's already doing that. But I could head over to margins and do custom margins and they have an option on here to center horizontally and center vertically and stuff like that so I can click OK and that kind of takes up space there and and that's what I would do to print now I could print this to PDF and then the next time I go to work I could print it out physically there which is what I did with my printed sheet right there and just keep that handy so that as you perform the task that you want to do every day you put your X or in my case you just write a number down so that over time you can see how that builds up I'm gonna go ahead and jump back over to my main screen now this is easy to modify so for instance I could go back to my original sequence here and where I have eight rows going down I doubled it so instead of one week across I made it 14 weeks across and so that makes the calendar even longer I can select one of these columns that I like go to my home ribbon format painter copy that formatting over so now each row is two weeks long which takes me to the very end of February all the way to the middle of June and that's actually what I printed for my calendar so there's no rule that says your each of your rows needs to be seven days or 14 days or five days or whatnot print out a calendar for one specific goal and then start working on it and don't break your chain thanks a lot